My name is Jack Storms. I'm a cold glass sculptor in Los Angeles, California. I've always been good at art. From when I was a little kid, I, I always loved to draw and sculpt and create. What made me want to become a, an artist is I was always good at it and I fell in love with the process. So when I got my degree from college, I threw up my hat <laughs> and before I caught it, I was having panic attacks about what I was going to do with this, this degree in art. But I always knew that if you take art seriously, you can find a career in it. The first thing I did is I started to look for a place that could use someone in their professional art studio. And I was lucky enough to find a place that did optic sculpture. So I got the job and I started working there. And from the second I was there, I just knew it was something I was gonna do for the rest of my life. What makes the artwork so unique is the fact that there are very few people on the planet that undertake this endeavor to create this type of artwork. Basically 99.9% .9 of the art glass that you see out there in the world is formed hot. That is to say they get their materials and they start manipulating the shape of the glass and start playing around with the colors and they do that hot. So they administer flame to it or they put it in a kiln or you know there's, there's several methods. But what I do is I don't use any heat at all. I grind and grind and grind and then I polish and that's what separates me from everybody else. It's much more difficult and it takes a lot more time but for me the effects are just brilliant. Each one of these pieces takes approximately 8 to 18 weeks to complete from start to finish. Because of the labor involved and because of the perfection, because of the tolerances being so tight, it's a pursuit of perfection at every single turn. So because of that, they, they take some time. Uh, let me describe the process for you. Uh, we get these large blocks of glass. This one is a, a piece of gold lead crystal and it comes in a block about that long and then we cut it into different pieces and then I'll grind down all these pieces flat. So that's what I do with every single piece of uh, lead crystal that comes in here. So from this point I'll cut this down the middle, polish all those interior surfaces, that takes about a day and a half, then I uh, insert a piece of dichroic. For example this piece is halfway in process. So what I've done is I've I put in the dichroic right here, all that color. And then I come to a stage like this, where I have them where you see color all the way around here. That's because I've cut it so many times and put all this color in. So this is a week long, two week long process because what you've got to do is you've got to get it, you've got to get it to a point where it's completely polished, bring it back to a glue room, administer all the color that's in there, put it back together, bring it back out, recut it bring it back to the glue room, bring it back out, regrind it, recut it, bring it back to the glue room. So every single one of these steps, they just take time, time, time. There's not a whole lot you can do for shortcuts if you want the work to look like it should look. Almost universally, people ask me when they see the work, how did you get that in there? How do you get those pieces in there? How do you get that color in there? And uh, I've got to explain to them that actually I build that first and then I surround it with clear glass it relies on what's called the refractive index. So the inside is lead crystal and light passes through that differently than it does with the optic crystal that I surround the work with. So the optic crystal and the high-end epoxy that I use that holds it all together again, they share the same refractive index. So light passes through them without much acknowledgement to the eye. But when it comes to the lead, you'll see a fine line of demarcation where you just see this piece of a glass within glass almost suspended. Of course it's not, but it appears that way. It's, it's a fun, beautiful aspect of the work. So one of the uh, components that I use inside the, uh, all the artwork is the dichroic crystal. And what makes a dichroic crystal so spectacular is that it shows two different colors for every piece of uh, glass you have. Now you can probably see that it's wafer thin but within this thin piece of glass, there's a coating on here that will translate into two different colors. It'll also cast a colored shadow and it will reflect color as well. It's just one of the elements that add to the spectacular nature of the work. My favorite piece of artwork is by far the Viviovo. I created this piece of artwork. Uh, I started it and it just proved to be so difficult in, in the process that I just, I pretty much gave up on it and uh, I was getting ready for a show and I had met this wonderful girl that eventually ended up being my wife and I was trying to show off for her 
So I brought her in front of the 12, 15, 20 pieces that I had getting ready for a show. And I said, what's your favorite piece? Thinking that I was going to, I don't know what I was going to do. Maybe I was going to give it to her, I don't know. And she looks at all the pieces and she says, I love them all, but this one that's unfinished right here, I think that's my favorite because of what it could be. It looks like it's, it's almost there. And of course, uh, I named that piece after her. It was the Viviovo. Uh, Vivian is my wife's name, and Ovo is Portuguese uh, for egg. And my wife's from Brazil, so it all came together because my fantastic idea was to name the thing egg. This is a gold Viviovo, or uh, Viviovo de Oro. And this is just a phenomenal piece. I do this for a living, I stare at the work all day and every single time I do one of these pieces it it makes me pause and sit there and just reflect on how beautiful it is I, I sometimes look at this and I can't believe I <laughs> I can't believe I do this kind of work it's just it blows me away one of the things about my work that I find so exciting is that I incorporate a Fibonacci sequence and Fibonacci ratios into the work. The Fibonacci ratio is the golden ratio. It's everywhere in nature. It's why a tree grows so tall versus so wide. It's everywhere in our body. It, its ratios are in our face. Your nose is in a ratio to your eye and you see it almost universally in a conch shell. That spiral comes up. That's a ratio. The reason why I use that in my artwork is because all good artwork has it, but it's crucial to my work because I rely on a straight line. All of my polishing surfaces have to be straight, and there's no such thing as a straight line in nature. So what I've got to do is uh, I've got to take the straight lines that don't occur in nature and make them natural. So I've got to use that Fibonacci as a bridge between the collector and the artwork because without it, it's, it looks very manufactured and it looks very automated and it's not. It's labor intensive at every step of the process is intense human interaction and it's pursuit of perfection. So to get that across, to get it across that it's a creation and not something that's being manufactured, then the Fibonacci is absolutely crucial. I draw inspiration from being able to pull ideas out of the ether, being able to touch the creative, being able to draw from that creative wellspring, being able to take something from your head, your thoughts, and being able to translate them into something that's solid right in front of you. A lot of people ask me what my artwork means to me. What does this piece mean to me? But that's not the right question. My question is, what is this artwork going to mean to the person that's going to take it home? Because that's what to me, this artwork is really all about. What does it mean to the person that is going to put this in their home and look at it every day? That's where, that's where I get my meaning from. So when someone says, Jack, what does the artwork mean to you? I, I turn it around on them and I say, you've got to tell me what it means to you. Is this something that you bought for your wife for an anniversary gift? Or is this something to remember your trip to Hawaii? Or is it something that you just want to buy to look at every day because it's just so beautiful? Because if that's the answer, because it looks so beautiful, then the answer is I created it out of sheer beauty.